last night in the screening for the documentary film, Dear Everyone, Sincerely, The Virgin Island was shown at the Burke Theater to bring awareness to the devastating impact of Hurricanes Irma and Maria on the U.S. Virgin Islands. Our cameras were there, and this is what took place. They told us it was coming. We should have been more prepared. They were saying our paradise would be taken away. Concerned as Virgin Islanders, uh, when people are on the ground and they look at, he's hear the national news or hear stories about what's being told, because people in the Virgin Islands, many of them do not have outside communication right now, and so they're only hearing what their family members are able to communicate from them in the states. And when they see the discussions about Puerto Rico or Florida, and they don't hear the Virgin Islands, there's a real concern that uh, they're not going to be taken care of really important about this film is it gives an opportunity for others to hear our story uh, and know what the needs are of the people of the Virgin Islands. I mean, listen, two Category 5 hurricanes hitting an isl islands of 100,000 people. Both of our hospitals are gone, many of our schools, tremendous amounts of loss of homes. It's something that the federal government needs to be engaged in, and we need the support of other African Americans, of other Americans, to, to support us. But one of the great things that I'm hoping that this film does is not to show our need, but show the resilience and the strength of the people of the Virgin Islands, that despite what's happened, that we're able to continue to pick ourselves up and move on. Those, those hurricanes may have bent our backs, but they didn't break them. That we're not a broken people, that we still have resilience and ability to, to recreate ourselves. During the meeting that we had um, with the Congresswoman, they wanted to help get the word out. And because I'm a vampire and publicist, um, I guess that's part of why they called me. But given the magnitude of what needed to be said, it, took, it would take more than a press conference or a press release. So I slept on it, and I woke up, my spirit said, hey, tell the story, do a documentary. And once you make a sense to do something, you have to move. It's really, it's really, we have to move, and we don't have any time because we want to get it done before the holidays kick in, and because that begins to cloud the situation with holidays, and uh, the time, people forget, you know, so we have to really get in and, and just do it. So it's really all about awareness. This is what this project is about, awareness. And with that, we'll empower people to take action, whether it's from a political standpoint, social justice standpoint, raising money, rebuilding, all of that. So if you say anything to your beautiful people of the Virgin Islands, what would you We survive for a reason. There's a whole lot of work to do. Let's put our hands to it. Let's get it done. And I would say, let's cut the red tape. There's a lot of red tape that's keeping services and goods from the hands of people who need it. And I implore on the gatekeepers to cut the red tape and let's get to the business of serving people. All right, folks. Also this week at Howard University, historian Ana Lucia Araujo, author of Reparations for Slavery and the Slave Trade, a Transnational and Comparative History, held a book signing and discussion that delved into the financial material and symbolic reparations for slavery in the Atlantic slave trade. Here is a recap of that book signing. For many years, I have been working on uh, how slavery is either um, concealed or exposed in the public space of former slave societies, such as the United States, 